Hi everyone, this is filmmaker Onir and today we are going to have this very exciting panel uh, for you discussing in how important it is to uh, be inclusive in cinema and we have an exciting panel uh, today and I'm going to introduce you to them. So the first one on the panel is Paramita Vora. Uh, she's a filmmaker, feminist filmmaker, founder of Agents of Ish. Uh, she's written one of my favorite films, Kamosh Pani. Uh, I would now let Paramita Kabe. Wonderful to have you, Paramita. And um, I thought that it would be much more fun to hear what Paramita Vora thinks of herself as. You know, I feel that you know the audience should see each of us <laughs> the way we see ourselves. Also, you know, otherwise not just information. Well, you know, my bio everywhere has variously said it uh, different. Paramita, I think you have to unmute yourself. I am unmuted. Can you hear me? Are you you're not able to hear me? I'm not muted. Paramita, your voice. Um, I think Onir can't hear me. So I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. Um, I cannot hear you at all. Oh, oh. Well, I am going to speak for the benefit of the audience in the meanwhile, while you figure it out. But um, at various times, I have described myself as uh, a girl you can't take out of Mahakali, which is the neighborhood I live in, and also as filmmaker, writer, and Kishmish Ki Masi, who is my niece. So I do think I take my identity from her, and of course, as a devoted Antakshari player. I hope I don't have to keep introducing myself for a long time because I don't have that much to say about myself. Um, I think we've lost Onir, so... Yeah. Hi, Dar. Our next Hi, Dar. <laughs> and I'm going to ask her to introduce herself till Onir comes back. Thank you. So but you know what? I think what's incredible here that um, almost like by nature, it just turned out to be that we're not just introduced. We are like almost like a chain introduction to each other, which I think is great. It's a, it's a good sign. Um, so my name is Darga. I'm a filmmaker. Um, I have done two feature films, which was extremely painful and a lot of learning experience. Recently, I watched one and I'm like, oh my God, I think I shouldn't ever do films again. I think I'm just someone who keeps uh, proving myself that wait, can I be a filmmaker or I can't be a filmmaker? And it changes every day. And I think it's just my struggle of um, being an artist mm -hmm. and figuring out whether am I one or not. And I think for me right now, it's just day to day struggle and in a way, just my main identity. And where are you joining us from? Oh, right. oh, that's also terrible. <laughs> uh, I'm right on the one hand. Um, I'm in writer's room right now because um, we are writing a show for Netflix and it's extremely, extremely painful um, experience physically, morally, in, in all just possible ways. And I always thought that writers, they're just trying to exaggerate, saying, oh, you know, it's such a tricky experience. It is tricky every day. Now I'm like, I just, I don't want ever to write. I just want to direct. Um, yeah. So it's um, in Panjikani, we thought that fresh air can help the creativity, but apparently not. It was just excuse uh, to postpone mm. writing. Yeah, well, less hot than Bombay. So maybe <laughs> you could use our next panelist, right? Since we are doing yes. the daily race. <laughs> Absolutely, let's introduce the next panelist. And it's Raga, this beautifully, extremely impressing and inspiring person. Hi, Raga. And let's unmute you. Mostly people try to mute me, but thank you for <laughs> unmuting. <laughs> yeah, OK. So, so the way I describe myself is that I am a very random person. It took me 50 years to come out. You know, from saying, log kya kahenge, you know, then kuch to log kahenge, to now, kahona pyar hai. You know, so I, I live my life my, my way. I say, love, man, love is free. It's easy. And it's the most wonderful, you know, social thing to be. So I just 
talk about love. I write about love. I've written lots and lots of beautiful love stories with a twist. So I'm about love. Oh, wow. That's, a, that's the most beautiful. Oh, wow. I just like it. I felt it throughout. <laughs> Wonderful, Dara. And Omir is back. And Omir, we have one yeah, person sorry. left. <laughs> Sulakna. Sulakna is the next uh, person to be introduced. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hi. I am so excited to be here. Uh, my name is Sulakna. I am perennially a screenwriter, occasionally a director, constantly a dramatic person. <laughs> I have been writing since I was a child, but professionally, I've been writing for about two years now. And my agenda as a writer is to make everything gay. So <laughs> I just want to like create beautiful worlds, create beautiful characters, create amazingly real worlds and just touch hearts. <laughs> Hi, wonderful to hear all of you. Sorry, I missed out a couple of, I think, fun talk. I don't know what happened <laughs> with the year, but uh, good to be back. And uh, first of all, wishing you all a happy International Women's Day. And good to have an all women panel discussing uh, about uh, inclusivity, diversity. Also, you know, for me, it's really special to have you here, Raga, for the reason that we are working on a film together, which is uh, which would be my first uh, film, which would be a lesbian love story rom com based, inspired by Raga. You know, you with your laughter and smiles and amazing story is something uh, you know I look forward to bring to the cinemas very soon. Uh, so I just wanted that you know it would be nice maybe if we talk uh, about. You know, we all know how important its inclusion is, how important it is to have the queer gauge also uh, being represented in the screen. Because just like we have, we constantly talk about having more representation of women in front and behind the scene. So I would like to start with Dar. Uh, you know, uh, I wanted to know what. I mean, what is it that you see in the industry and how have you been negotiating? First of all, I love cold mess. I had to tell you that, <laughs> you know, I love the video and I love the way you, you know, it's so refreshing to see that. Unfortunately, I've not seen three and a half and that's on my agenda that I have to see <laughs> that film. But if you can talk to us about your work and how, how, inclusion is a part of your work and what are the things you need to negotiate while doing it? Hmm. Um, I think for me, inclusion was always a um, kind of interesting question to answer to myself because at some point of time, I feel um, I chose naturally to be ignorant in terms of my own place and whether someone accepts me or not as a woman because when I just started, it was so many just subconscious fears and subconscious decisions that I had to take, whether to go and meet someone or not, whether to work with someone or not. And at that point of time, I just decided to completely shut myself down and to concentrate on whether I'm an artist or not. And then if I, I will be lucky physically to survive or not to be hurt, it, it will be a luck. And it actually worked with uh, for me for some time. And sometimes I was just like in the verge of like really weird stories, but I feel in a way that naivety at that point of time, let's say eight, nine years ago, um, saved me because I didn't do a lot of things consciously, but then the kind of repression that I, I was feeling, I realized that I can't change the industry in a way, and I can't constantly fight it, right? Because I still think if I fight back, whether it's my political views or if it's my individual just views on morality in general, which is for me as strict as a lot of kind of political structure, I will be just on the other spectrum of the fight and I will be playing into the fight. And I was thinking, is there any way how to participate in the fight but not being an opponent? Because when you're an open, uh, uh, like opponent of someone, you're playing someone's game. So, and I, by getting a lot of rejections or by being chosen, let's say, as a DA only because of, of your gender um, and having fear to stay, for example, longer longer hours working in the office, I just realized I was so uncomfortable that for me, the only way was either to give up or to create your own bubble, right? 
So that pushed me to create my own, I guess, place where I was feeling happy. I was I was inviting people whom I want to collaborate with. And this is how Jugard started. This is how we've done first and second feature film. And for me, even the inclusivity goes along with me being um, accepted as an artist because I'm not from India. Most of the people who, who was trying to work with me or whom I wanted to kind of have to collaborate with, they were very skeptical whether I will be able to get Indian beats or or Indian sensibility or so for Ukraine I'm too Indian and in India I'm too foreign and though I spent here 10 years so I'm always in that weird border that I'm not accepted by anyone so then I realized okay fine I'm not accepted by anyone then let me just create my own thing and um, the way so for me to make first two feature films it was the same way I was knocking on the doors everyone rejected so we're like okay fine no one wants to do it let's just do it together just to do, to do it with people who trust me same was with music videos and if at the beginning it was just male team it was me and just 15 boys now i have writers room who have only girls um and it it, it didn't happen as your as my conscious choice it's just everyone who started applying um their skills and their understanding of social issues was so deeper that my choice naturally went for the to have kind of female writer's room. And for me, it's the most natural, I think, way to do it when n not someone pushes me uh, or someone dictates me how, how to be or what kind of artist to be, but it just comes naturally. Um, yeah, I, I think that freedom as an artist that you have your right to choose whom you want to work with and you have right to make mistakes, which I feel is the most important thing nowadays as an artist. I want to, ha I want to tell stories that I want to tell, but I don't want to have fears to tell them because I might, I might get a backlash from um, this political party or from that community because then mm, I just don't think that I'm able to express myself. And I, I think it's just beautiful to allow ourselves to make mistakes and have people who can point at those mistakes in a way that um, it's nurturing than more de on destruction level. Sorry that I just said it. I don't know where it's, it came from. I think it was just in my head. <laughs> No, I think it's fascinating to hear your journey. I maybe missed out during the introduction that, you know, you were all the way from Ukraine because when I saw your sir, I mean, name as Dar Guy, I thought maybe you're from Kashmir <laughs> because, uh, you know, Kashmiri uh, have the same surname. And by the way, my, uh, I don't use my surname, but my surname is also Dar. So I was like, okay, I'm going to meet another <laughs> dar, you know. But this is fascinating also because I feel that, you know, for me as a person, I'm born and brought up in Bhutan, you know, being out and proud gay, it's always been that, you know, this whole, I understand this essence of being an outsider, you know, and when you're an outsider, yeah. you are always trying to include yourself in a space and it, I think, automatically makes us as people inclusive, you know, because you've gone through that journey. And I think it's, uh, yeah. in a way, beautiful. Uh, we'll come back to you. And uh, I wanted to ask Parumita. I think, again, I, you know, every time, like, Khamosh Pani is a film that I keep visiting. You know, it's not that it's, uh, and it is, uh, you know, I just wanted to know, because for you, I'm sorry, though I've been telling that let's talk about now. I just want to know a little bit about, you know, when you were forming the characters of Khamosh Pani, you know, what was in your mind about, you know, because it's it's a difficult script about the characters. Well, I mean, you know, to talk about inclusivity, I think an interesting thing is that actually on this panel, uh, other than maybe Khamosh Pani and one or two other things, people don't really know the other things I do because most mainstream people take no interest in, uh, in documentary or in that kind of small indie space. So there's often a sense that the thing that you get included in has to always be mainstream. There is a frame into, in which there can be diversity, but outside that frame, it's difficult to understand representation. So I just want to flag that a bit, but Khamosh Pani, which I wrote in 1998, um, only... How many years ago was that? 20 some years ago was, you know, I mean, it was an interesting time because it was before the Internet was really big uh, and before you could actually access information easily. And, you know, I wrote the script without ever meeting the director. 
so that was also a kind of intriguing experience because she called me up on the phone from delhi uh, a friend of mine had recommended me and she said you know i want to write this film and she sent me the script i looked at it I me mean, not a script a kind of treatment and i said you know i think that uh, i would change this i would change that and i'm thinking this she said how long will you take and i said uh, two months she said i'm going to germany i was like okay you go by the time you come back i'll finish it and i think this is the kind of foolhardy things that only 28 year old people can say because at the time i was like ah kar lungi but actually it was indeed like i think because there is so little interference from the outside world of what should be and shouldn't be the way the internet now does there was a kind of beauty to be trying to understand the characters as people right not as representatives of an identity or representatives of a history alone which of course we all are and they too were having gone through partition and being at a certain moment in pakistani history but eventually as an indian girl uh you know who has grown up in india and maybe the child of a partition family but never gone to pakistan didn't know much about it um there was just an effort to try to understand what are these people feeling you know and i think that for diversity that's a really important uh important way because art allows you to uh, erase the very rigid boundaries that identity imposes and one of the ways in which it does is does that is by allowing the interiority of people to define the journey you know who are we as people i mean this idea that rohit femula said in his letter that a man was never seen as just a man right so the idea that a person is just a person so i think once you make that effort so i sometimes think the fact that i didn't have all that much knowledge about history and partition just a little bit a few books it helped me to think harder about what are these people feeling right now and so it took away that weight of representation which i think Uh, lessens diversity in a way because otherwise it just becomes like ticking a box. But when you have the experience of a human being fully from their emotional space, you, you start to feel a connection and you start to see how you are similar and different. You accept the differences with respect, but you build empathy and connection with each other. And I think that's all that I was really trying to do. So I long to be simple and young again in that way. I think like it helps us a lot. Um, no, I and think I think what was. Yeah, sorry, sorry i think what was like i th- what is really important and what the reason why i wanted to speak about this is inclusion is so many things you know right now we have all this borders and you know what you did so many years ago you know telling a story which is across the border you know and that whole exchange of beat artists beat you know people behind the scene and in front of the camera is a beautiful inclusive experience you know and, i have a very and, story to yeah uh, not exactly to do with the film but you know my <coughs> family was from lahore and when we finally got the funding for the film i got the chance to go to lahore uh, for research and obviously i was very excited my father was very excited that i was going and he described to me exactly like you know when you turn here you will see this and i like papa now many years have passed i don't think it will be the same but somehow when i went to lahore the first thing which happened is that we were staying at the gymkhana and when we woke up in the morning there was a man at the door with a rose saying that i heard there were people from india so i wanted to give you a present right and then we went searching for my dad's old house and found it and you know all of that and the way to find it was to go to this very famous bakery uh in anarkali which is the old city and ask like do you know where such and such house is because that bakery has been there since the 1800s and that man used to write down the names of all the people who came from across the border to see their old houses because there used to be many hindus in that locality when i went back to pakistan some years later for a conference i thought you know let me go see the house again and when i went to see it it had actually been broken and i felt like oh it had just been waiting for me to come the first time and see it and go back so i thought like now i'm here i'm going to buy some biscuits from the bakery for my dad and just go back and i was a bit sad and when i went into the bakery and i asked for the biscuits the man looked up and he said aap paromita ho raha hai na aapne to bada time laga diya wapas aane mein i'm like how do you remember me he's like no we remember everybody who comes you were so you were crying you were so moved by and i thought like it is impossible to describe this experience and it's very simple inclusion um and many many years later i wrote an article about it and i got a message from a woman saying it was amazing to read about my uncle's old house and it turned out she was the niece of the person who lived in the house after my 
father's family left during partition wow. so i think yeah they, this these are incredible opportunities when we don't think so hard about can this girl write the script i mean if i think the director thought like okay i've heard she's a good writer let me ask her it was a little random in that way and i was like yeah yeah okay i'll write it without thinking too much about it but that simple simple connection of writing a story together of making art in some way i think allows you to experience the world very differently and to think about other people and yourself and identity and politics and borders in a completely different way so it is transformative in that sense it's fascinating uh, you know parubita and i was just having this flashback like of my trip to karachi and i remember that every shop that one went to you know everybody would come rushing that up india se aaye ho chai lo mithai lo and this whole thing that ghar wahan you yeah. know that and which is you know you feel that that connect mm -hmm. is there which we are not nurturing unfortunately you know and uh, that is so precious and before that generation is lost which still has the connect we need to revive that you know mm -hmm. uh, connection by telling each other story listening to each other and i hope that we can do that once again soon times are better uh, mm -hmm. i'll come to you raga i'll come back we'll come back to you pa parumita Ra uh, raga it's been like i watch your instagram posts all the time and it's like i love the way you're using new media you know and telling all these fun stories about your life about your act, you know incredible journey you know being married with two children and then coming out and i like the way you are using this uh, instagram to reach out to so many young people who are still you know fighting to how to just be themselves and i think it's so empowering so please yeah you take over tell us more thank you thank you only but first of all i must say thank you to you know thanks to you because my journey of coming out started with you basically as you know my life has been a one big accident i came into the world apparently accidentally and everything that i have done in my life has been accidental and i i take it as a gift from the universe if i met anybody if i meet anybody accidentally i think there is a purpose and there is an intent behind it and i use that to my advantage so uh, this lgbt videos in a minute is also an accidental thing i read somewhere about uh, baba ramdev saying for instance that uh, being gay is a disease i said this is fascinating i read a little bit more about it so i'm like ah chalo theek hai so what i did is i made a little film choto film you know me and my partner nikla we've got uh, got uh, our cameras out and we said so i so there's a little film which says baba ramdev uh, says uh, being gay is a disease so and then i'm calling up hr with a big smile on my face hello today i can't come into office and my hr is saying oh what happened are you all right i am feeling gay you know so basically i'm not coming in because i'm gay and it's a disease right so what happened is something these kind of things make an impact and my audience is very young i have 18 19 20 year olds who follow me and you know that this issue is actually more prevalent for uh, amongst the young people because they don't even know what they don't know for instance my own story um, uh, owner as you know i came out twice I mean, I think I must be the only person in this world who has come out twice: once accidentally, and second time by choice. And there was a twenty-year gap. In that twenty years, I cannot tell you the kind of stuff that I've been through, and I've experienced, and I've heard, and observed as well. Nothing has changed, but much has changed. You know, twenty years ago, I wasn't even aware. Our frame of reference as we grow up is—I mean, for us at least, it was movies and books, right? And in the movies, being gay was a caricaturish. Thing. so you when you were gay it was mostly men and it was only all about being very uh, you know effeminate and very camp and we were uh, we always them, saw them being ridiculed so in the family to say that you were gay meant that you were one of those types you were not normal that you were diseased so my family had a huge reaction that also i had a huge reaction i was homophobic i always say because i was homophobic for me and then when i came out at 50 i was so scared i thought if i come out now imagine going to the entire experience again putting yourself out there being vulnerable and telling people acha bhi aao spit on me slap me hit me as they did earlier but somehow my family my children are now 23 i have twins my partner and my ex husband you know uh, they all give me the courage and said now we are going to be with you 
But as, as I was coming out, I was going through that journey. And after I met with you, I remember this, that the younger people started coming to me and saying, I can't tell my parents that I am gay. And I said, why? Because I, they don't understand. Baba Re Ramdev's of the world make it difficult for me. Television or the films that we are watching these days make it difficult for me. Everything is seen as a curse. Everything is seen as something that is abnormal. Normal is described in the way that only, I think, uh, normal. I, I have no understanding. I don't want to be that normal. You know, I'm glad I'm a lesbian because I want to be this lesbian who is not seen as normal. Because thank God, like for the for the journey we've been through, because we can sit here and have empathy, humility, and the courage, which a lot of people lack. So, so only coming back to your, your you know, uh, question is about using different mediums in a manner that work. For me, my audience is young. I really want the younger people to know that this is a choice. It is a decision you have to make. There will be consequences, of course, to those decisions, but make that decision. As I say, don't wear the wrong fitting shoes. It is too painful. I think you have beautifully put that. And again, I think it's so important, like what we are talking about today, to be inclusive. Because if one remembers, I remember growing up in Bhutan where I did not know the word gay existed till I was in class 10. Okay, so for me, be it the cinema I saw, be it the books I read, be it the advertisements I saw, be it the biology, chemistry, history, I was absent everywhere, you know. And then when I came to Kolkata to, for my higher studies, that's when I slowly started to know, okay, this is me. So first is recognizing oneself, figuring out for oneself. There was nobody to tell you what, you know, how do you define how you deal with yourself. And once you've done that, is to try and tell the rest of the world that, listen, you, now you have to teach them how to accept you. You know, I always find it funny that, Nobody told me how to accept the straight word. You know, I just did it. But how is it that, you know, all of us are always, you know, now we are going for inclusive seminars and conferences and talks, and we are trying through, you know, videos, films to make them understand. And still, it seems like it's so difficult, you know. Why is it so difficult to, uh, for them to accept us when we found it so difficult? Maybe we're superiors. <laughs> so yeah, I feel that uh, it, is, uh, it is, that's why I think it's very, very important that our stories, we, there is more and more representation. And with this, I'll come to Sulagna who is doing really exciting stuff, the third season of Firsts for Dice Media. I'm sorry, Sulagna, I've not really seen the entire thing, but I was trying to quickly catch it, and I was like, wow, this is fun. And this is young, fun, and, you know, I need to update myself to be telling <laughs> stories for the younger generation. So, Raga, Sulagna, you all are inspiring me to relook at the way I tell my stories. So, over to you, Sulagna. Uh, you know, working on 2020 actually per se for a lot of people was like professionally crazy. But for me, it almost was like my professional calling because I got to tell two super queer stories, which were very, very close to my heart that year. So, you know, as, as I said in my introduction, I have always considered myself to be a complete cheesy, dramatic, romantic human being. For me, I literally wake up with drama, I sleep with drama. So I remember after I came out of the closet, and that was 2018, and once I kind of started navigating the queer dating circle, I realized I have zero frame of reference. I have zero clue of what should I do on a first date? What am I supposed to be? Am I supposed to hold her hand? Am I supposed to like, because everything we have always consumed has been just so heteronormative, right? And which is when I realized, and that was around the time I was also kind of starting to write and I realized that, hey, I want to create wholesome queer stories because we deserve that. We deserve our Notting Hills. We deserve our super cheesy, quirky airport sequences of like stopping the person you love. We deserve our sorry hmm, night skies ke niche date night kind of sequences. We deserve our wholesomeness because somehow, first of all, there has been such less coherent queer stories except for the ones you have created on air. <laughs> Other than that, the kind of stories that we also see are so sad most of the times. Like, I understand, obviously, that coming out is a huge, huge struggle in itself. But 
our lives are not only sad and it's not only about struggles we have our wholesomenesses we do stupid things we fall for supremely straight supremely emotionally unavailable people we have all those nuances and those nuances need to be talked about the cute the cuteness needs to be out there because people the the one of the things about normalizing conversations about sexuality or about anything at all is to show it as completely like anybody else so we are equally screwed up we are equally messy we are equally everything that you know straight relationships have so i think that is what kind of really uh, made me want to tell these kind of stories which is what and the kind of response that first got it was even though it was a mini series and we had typically made it for an, for an instagram audience but the response we got for it was heartwarming to say the least there have been so many people on my instagram on twitter telling me oh my god like till now yesterday also i was kind of going through uh a few comments and i was just like oh my god it really did touch a chord and uh, that's what i've tried to do with my upcoming netflix uh, project also and i just really really hope that uh, yeah I, i just continue telling really really cute queer stories that's wonderful to hear shlogna and actually that's something you know i've been trying with my my f- next film that i'm uh, starting it's called we are and we are is a celebration of queer lives and queer love stories and they are <clears throat> all with happy endings and uh, i feel that you know like while we talk about that we have everything that you know is in the straight lives you know all these emotions i feel <clears throat> also it's different you know how you know and that is important because when when i see a film like suppose sub mangal sabdhan i feel it's not my story you know i don't see myself there and i feel that it's so important for us to be telling our stories because i'm sorry we have lived the life where we have experienced both the worlds totally accepted both the worlds totally but the court are court street you know heteronormative world for the longest time did not even recognize our existence you know so when they tell our stories i feel very often it is from the space that makes them feel comfortable you know and very often that does not even touch upon spaces that you know we want to explore we love we celebrate and i feel that is what is uh, you know inclusive is not only the stories where you know it also means having voices representation you know uh, like how when women tell their stories it has a different uh, flavor kind of thing so i think uh, i that is something i really also see in your uh, storytelling that there is that you know naughty different element which is i don't know if i get uh, it if it sounds like stereotyping but queer i also i just want to add just... one thing uh... I just want to add one thing to this entire tale was, you know, when I got these two projects, it was like back to back almost in July. July was a transformative month altogether. I remember feeling very scared on it because I remember because throughout these years, having seen super cishet people tell queer stories in very, very mediocre manners, I had always wanted, you know, what I want to tell, like queer people should be allowed to tell queer people stories. and when i finally had that opportunity i remember freaking out i was like oh my god now the onus is on me what if i screw up what if i unintentionally you know do something wrong what then who else will i blame then and stuff like that so the fear especially when you like there's a huge amount of responsibility that comes with you telling queer i mean queer people telling queer people stories as well but yeah you you're absolutely right i just wanted to kind of just put across the fact that i was supremely scared i think that uh, you know dar what she was telling right at the beginning is okay we can all make our mistakes but it has to be our mistakes you know just because i keep telling just because one is queer or a woman <clears throat> you know does not or a straight woman what i mean is that does not mean that we are perfect 
we make our mistakes we have our you know we we have our evil bits whatever you know so i think we uh, we don't need to be this you know perfect whatever we should celebrate every, us as a whole and then it's not scary yeah i, I mean i think also that put, i think it's, can i just add to to what also you were saying and so that now was saying course, please. that i feel when when we talk about inclusivity right like i remember um like when i was here and i'm i think till now more or less i am not just also fighting that i'm i'm a filmmaker it's very tricky in india being foreign being white and being white is still european you know like eastern european white is not like ooh, ooh, white it's actually really bad because you already being put and judged in a really weird um like categories right but yeah. i feel when we create right we create because we want to tell our stories and when we talk about inclusivity i think it's also important when we can include each other right and inclusivity which doesn't separate us doesn't mean that or oh, you know because you're a man you can't tell a woman's story i'm like no great please tell women's story more women's stories you tell if you make mistakes i hope we can have a dialogue and i'll tell you what didn't work for me because it was a bit weird right and but go ahead and i feel any stories we tell we have right to tell our, our stories but we also have right to have dialogue with each other and to figure out what are we doing wrong and if tomorrow let's say i have in a series that we are developing i have a queer character and i had unfortunately so many suggestions saying that you know just don't include it because you might get backlash from this community from that community if you just have only lesbians then you will have that and i'm like don't put this pressure i want to put it because it's my world in my world i don't have any separation but at the same time i understand that it's complicated and i ha- i want to have right to to represent whom i want to represent and at the same time being able let's say to reach to raga and saying hey what do you think is it right or not um it, it, should we do it or, or or you think i should avoid it and this dialogue the most important thing right when we are not saying oh this is what i'm creating this is what i'm creating and we should not fear feel fear to reach out to someone even if we've done mistakes or we will just to prevent mistakes in future yeah i think uh, you're absolutely r- right i mean we don't live in a world which is you know wa- separate walls for we're all together and ultimately that is what one needs to nurture even stories that j- just because i'm gay does not mean that's the only stories i would tell and similarly someone can be straight and tell i mean suppose broke back mountain you know such a beautiful film so i think th- that openness of accepting you know that someone else can maybe tell my story better than me should always be there i feel that it's all right now why does one talk about inclusion in terms of beat queer voices or women behind is just for too long just too many for centuries and centuries and centuries we have not had our voice so one makes that little bit more you know effort that no these people need to tell their stories because no one is even recognize their presence for so long you know now slowly there is you know and it's really great to because one can see the tone the way when a a, a female a woman directs a film you know the way she tells a story you know i always feel that if the army was more inclusive violence would become much lesser you know because if you look at i mean i mean it's a cliche but at the end of the day if you look at even something like child sexual abuse you know most of the abusers are men you know unfortunately though i am a man i have to admit it you know and it is uh, and some people then will tell immediately jump into you that oh you're st- trying to stereotype women no i'm celebrating i think they're better <laughs> they're better than human beings than us you know mostly so uh, yeah i feel that we should not have these walls uh, which but at the same time we need to consciously because mostly those people who are telling our stories are not even willing to have that dialogue today if i'm making a film about something i don't know i'll do my research i'll have that dialogue like what you said you would talk to raga or whoever you know but to presume that you are you are to, you know you know what is best for me is a little dangerous very often parumita 
I wanted to say something about that. Yeah. You know, I think it's not as, I mean, this argument that art is something uh, intrinsically noble and that I want to tell whatever stories I want to tell. So it liberates me from uh, identity politics and identity politics is coming in the way of freedom of expression. I think that we should be careful. I mean, obviously in theory, in a perfect world, that would be true, but perspective, I, I think like one thing I would really want to argue for is that it's important for us to start calling most films that we watch men's films, because there are films made by men, right? And we just call them films. The normalization of one perspective, I think, has limited the way that we see art and storytelling. So I don't think that people shouldn't have all kinds of representations in their films. Of course, they should. But I do think there's a reality. There's a, there's a, a cultural reality that we inhabit. I mean, the fact is that, for example, it's upper caste people telling the stories of Dalits all the time. And you have barely one or two Dalit filmmakers out there whom people know about. And I think like what also happens is that the artistic voice that you we give to men, straight men, upper caste men, cis men, the artistic voice they're entitled to, that they can tell any story, and it's apparently a story about life. And everybody else is only limited to having to tell stories about our problems or something like that. Like even women filmmakers, it's very difficult for a woman to make a film in her own artistic voice, you know? You're only allowed to make films about women's problems. So sometimes I wish that, okay, now women don't make films because every time you make a film, I'm not seeing myself in it because it's just about this thing that I'm going to stand against the patriarchy. When you keep making films about the problem, you're actually promoting the problem because you're continuously thinking about the other side rather than making films which express your own experience of life. Exactly. Help us to reshape what is the idea of life, right? So I do think that the frame, I mean, I, and I need to have to humbly disagree with you that the army is created in order to have violence. So I don't think having more representation, and I think this is a very important fundamental issue of diversity and inclusion, that if we are just going to ask for inclusion into a format or into a frame, which is made for exclusion, then what is that inclusion going to look like? It's always going to leave somebody out, right? Like if we think marriage is, okay, everybody should get married. So we're going to leave out the people who don't want to get married. So maybe we need a different conversation about it. And what is that conversation? I mean, we, I would say that if we really want to talk about diversity, we have to talk about poetic kind of lives of all people mm -hmm. and allow all people the space to tell their poetic narratives, not only their political narratives, right? Because the, their poetry comes from a political place as well. And I think that we are stuck in this kind of electoral thing, right? Like now you make tick the box queer, tick the box woman, tick the box, you know, and then you're still in the box. <laughs> when, when boxes go, we're just ticking boxes. Boxes are, you know, barkarar. So we really need to think about something which dissolves, dissolves those boundaries. And I think that's, that requires many different voices to enter. It can't be that you'll squeeze somebody into the old voice. And that's a kind of ventriloquism, you know. So I think that we do have to think a little seriously. And I, I, I just want to say very quickly, I won't take up too much time. But, you know, like Agents of Ishq, which is a website that I run now, which has numerous narratives of people writing their own stories. We don't actually ask for stories from people depending on their identity. So whether you're straight, gay, trans, cis, every story is on par because it is told from the point of view of the person's experience of life, what they have learned from intimacy. And I think there is something we all have to learn from each other. So in a television show I directed, Connected Hamtum, there was a young lesbian woman and her difficulties with her lover, right? And she said that, she got a huge amount of mail from straight people that my parents don't understand my relationship with my girlfriend or because it's a different religion. So in a sense, there is something for straight people to learn from queer people. I don't know that straight people telling queer people story to queer the frame. And I think we need to queer the frame completely, right? Uh, Omir, can I add here? I, I so agree with, uh, you know, both Paramita and Jai, what they've said. You know, for me, people ask me often, they say, oh, so you're writing LGBT stories. And I said, no, I'm writing love stories. Love doesn't look at whether you're from the LGBT community, whether you have scars on your face, whether it's between 20 and 50 year old, unconventional, what they call, right? So first is that. And then I've also heard all of us say, society, you know, we talk about other people, we do a lot of othering. But I tell myself, I am part of that othering. I am the others that we talk about. So I have to change the narrative myself. Nobody else is going to come and hold my hand and say, change the narrative. And that's one of the reasons which, why I put out my story. And that othering that continues, that othering that happens is actually very disrespectful 
to all of us who exist, anybody who is not seen as or who's marginalized, that is a, a place of disrespect. And I say to myself that I am going to become that person so that I will never question society and I'm never going to question an other, the othering. You know, If I want to write a story about love between a 20-year-old and a 50-year-old or 60-year-old or a coming out story of a 90-year-old, I should make it mainstream. And I, somebody called me an idealist the other day. I said, I don't want to see this thing you know, uh, mainstream story and LGBT content story. I want to see stories. I want to make see films. A film should be if the ma main characters are two people falling in love, male and female, beautiful. If it's between woman and woman, beautiful. If it's between a man and a man, it should be beautiful. You should just go to the cinema to watch a love <coughs> story. Why do you have to go to cinema to say this is LGBT hai, or this is straight film? You know, that's uh, what I'm, I'm you know, only I, yeah, I feel that, you know, I in a way agree, like, but what like Paramita said, in an ideal world where all these walls are not there. But having said that, I feel like there was a time when, you know, by social media everywhere, I didn't want to write that I'm gay. You know, because I thought, why do I have to make this bracket? Be tomorrow I'm fluid, whatever, you know. And then I realized that there were so many <coughs> people you know, I knew young people who were shit scared of just saying the word, of being themselves, being and I realized that when I started putting out everywhere that I'm gay, you know, and I refused to be invisible, it meant a lot to a lot of people to help them come out and be themselves. Similarly, today, you know, the reason why there are LGBTQI film festivals is because community does not otherwise get to see these films in the normal theaters. Of course, once everything is normalized, yeah, we don't need these tags. But today, if we don't have these festivals, people, this is not just going and watching these films. This is a space, you know, where they feel free, where they can hold hands, where they can... People, we don't have spaces have this if you know it conscious my then my lover nickel because if it be lover nickel come and film you know and still one struggle you know so I feel that yes in an ideal world we don't need we're just human beings but unfortunately we don't live in that world and it is step by step that one negotiates and works towards where we don't need those tags but right now the need to empower those times so that at least one is accepted as an individual with us not being decided by a heteronormative world that, okay, this is it. The world is this. Everyone else is, you know, out of it. So I feel that's the reason why sometimes we need these tags, which is not, I mean, I, you know, I'm always conflicted. Uh, okay, we have just another 10 minutes and I feel that it will be nice to have everybody, you know, I think it was a fascinating discussion, but all of us, you know, put in our last thoughts about what we've been talking. So can we start uh, from Lobna? Let's go the other way around. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, ever since these two of my shows have been talked about a lot of people, a lot of well-meaning people, even my family often keeps telling me that, listen, don't just write queer stories, write like other stories also, otherwise you will get typecast. And I, and I kind of understand where they come from, but I just keep telling myself that I am not writing just queer stories. I am writing stories. I am writing stories about people, about reality at the end of the day. And why is it such a huge thought to kind of include real queer people in it like we can have queer serial killers we can have queer crazy people everything right so i think um for me inclusivity is real inclusivity will happen the day we don't have to call a same-sex story a homosexual story or a same-sex story i mean the moment we don't have to give it that tag but right now i think at least for a few more years till the conversations actually get normalized to a point where directors and producers don't use queerness or sexuality 
to kind of earn brownie points for themselves to call themselves progressive instead of actually doing justice to the story that is when true inclusivity will happen but till then we will have to kind of stand up on the terrace with our rainbow flags and be like hey you know what we are going to tell queer stories and not going to be apologetic about Sorry, Raga, your closing thoughts. Ah, uh, I think Raga, you're muted. Sorry. So, Onir, you know, yeah. I want to leave this thought that I will continue to write beautiful stories. To me, life is magical. No matter how many hardships one faces, it is how we look the lens that we look at. I want to people to see the reality of what lives we live. which is just we have we have jealousies insecurities the same heartbreak the same way we love you know i have been in with with a man in a you know marriage and i've been with a you know woman for many years so our lives are not the feelings don't change the depth of the feelings are not any different so i want the world to see that when you love you love fully just the way that you love it doesn't mean mean anything about gender or about what you look like your age and i want people to go to the cinemas and hopefully watch the content or to the television stories that i write and stories that we bring to the cinemas only together and feel that experience and that's what i want them to feel and take away that life is fine the way it is parvita thank you so much raga that was beautiful parvita i think you know my closing thoughts are for those of us who are creators and who think about making stuff that i i think we should always be careful that we don't get so lost in thinking about our own exclusion that we become unaware that we might be excluding somebody else so i would say that a huge curiosity in our hearts for more kinds of stories from different different spaces and different people is so important i mean in any uh when you go on a date when you fall in love curiosity is the thing that keeps you together to be curious about each other and i think that also applies to the world so i think that being curious about stories that are not coming out of the mainstream to be curious about other forms i mean you know it's great netflix bollywood whatever but the world has changed and people are telling a brazilian stories in a brazilian places so to go seek those stories out i think makes us more interesting in people because we are more interested in other people then and i think that would make our stories so much more exciting and it would change change art and that would change the world so yeah i think very beautifully put and i feel that like today you know there was a time when i used to really look down upon tiktok videos and then i realized no i need to go and explore the space you know and you know you suddenly realize that you see all this you know boys and girls from small towns you know which is called b town c towns whatever i don't know why but uh, you know doing this really bold crazy gay lesbian stories and in a very uh, the whole you know way of narrative is so different at the same time they are connecting with thousands of people they are not scared they are out there very very clear about who they are and i think it was kind of empowering and a learning lesson because you know right now we are also with the new rules you're constantly thinking that okay how do i tell this and how do i not you know mostly you're thinking how do you not offend all these invisible people who might get offended with what you're doing and suddenly you see a place like real or tiktok and they are telling all kinds of stories you know that's how about how we in the respectable world the if you're in the respectable world it will always try to make you more respectable right so that's why i think the mainstream is okay i mean good you make some money yeah. become well known great but i think that it's more exciting to create a different world right and i have found it more fulfilling as a creative journey to make a completely different world i know it's possible and the thing about tiktok videos is they are they are libidinal they tell the truth about sex desire enjoyment violence many things in the way that masala movies used to and i'm afraid respectable things don't so their lack of respectability makes them genuinely inclusive because they are really themselves right so i think yeah tiktok yeah i wish it comes back soon <laughs> yeah 
because because it's, it was honestly a learning and i think what you mentioned is something so valuable and so that you know all of us you know even politically we forget that you know we are minorities but at the same time we forget when it comes to others we keep thinking that this is only us and we forget that what the journey we had to stand up for other people who are going through you know various kinds of different journeys as minorities you know their voices being suppressed and i feel that is important to constantly be aware recognize no curious i think that's the most beautiful word for any creator artist uh dar will come to you uh for the last you know parting words your thoughts dar i think you have to unmute yourself yes that's that's correct um So thank you so much for this conversation. For me, it was really important, and I think this is why I want to be a filmmaker and I would strive to be a filmmaker just to have opportunity and excuse to meet um, people like like you guys. It's incredible. It just I feel it, it it teaches me so much. It teaches me just to I don't know every day to try to be different, to understand, to be more empathetic. Because also what Parmit was saying, we you know we were born in this world with very clear rules. We know it, right? um there are certain conditions that we can't just like we don't even know what's applying on us and how we are saying and the things that we are doing subconsciously maybe we're including something that maybe not is not right or it's right it's just so many different conditions there but the world is changing and we are in a way trying to change it and at the same time we product of this world and it will take time to wash off all these roles that we're supposed to play and we're kind of playing unknowingly right and it will take time but hopefully we can reduce this time and for me this is the time for us for me to to have the dialogues how we are having right now with each other doing research also not to have fear of telling our stories at the same time making mistakes it's okay to make mistakes but hopefully you're just making it once and you will not do it again and just evolving in our stories and to create just empathetic stories when we are telling it not because oh you know i just want i just had such a such an un, unusual idea that's why i will tell no because you want to tell the story because it's just some something is burning you want you want to cry you want other people to cry you want to feel you want to create that world of empathy in a way right and exploring that your character's world and fight right people with whom you can deb- debate grow to be criticized and to understand the world deeper I think that was uh, beautiful. Thank you, all of you. Anyone wants to say anything quickly? Last thing. No, I just think you, Onir. Yeah. I think we are all. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just like for me to sum this up, and I'm among such amazing people. Is that I think we are all changing the narrative, really, one story at a time, one art at a time. And to me, I think that is our journey. and that is our responsibility and so thank you you know wench films to bring this uh, to us and i'm thankful to be part of this uh, changing narrative yeah thank you all of you again once again thank you wench films for having us and again happy international women's day happy women's day thank you everybody have a wonderful bye bye thank you bye 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 bye